in the dream. You are falling. Lost in the listening distance. As dark locks in. <laughs> Nightfall. Good evening. I would like to reassure those listeners with tendencies towards claustrophobia that tonight I will be especially careful to take care of them. The play, adapted from a Michael McCabe short story by leading player Graham Haley, is called The Room. Welcome. <laughs> Mr. Todd? Ice? Uh, thank you, Miss Watts. Mrs. Watts, Mr. Todd. Oh, I'm sorry. There you are. Hmm, thank you. It pleases me to see a man save a whiskey. <laughs> does it, Miss... <laughs> sorry, Mrs. Watts. It does. <clears throat> My late husband, the Major, was partial to it. Husband? Yes. Uh, do I look like a spinster? No, no, not at all. You seem determined to make me one. I am a widow. I have been a widow for 22 years. Oh, I'm sorry. Alfred was also fond of a cigarette in the evening. Would you care for one? No, no, thank you. I don't smoke. As you wish. Well, uh, cheers. Yes. Mmm, that's a lovely scotch. Atlas, one of the first ever produced in Scotland and not generally available. Oh, I'm honoured. Oh, so long since I've been able to offer my whisky. I've had that bottle for more than 20 years. Poor Alfred was the last one to drink from it. <coughs> he died the next day. <clears throat> oh, really? Yes, ironic. What do you mean? The day before he died, he had a violent argument with Father Doyle. That's a long story. Suffice to say, the Major renounced his faith. But why do you say it was ironic? Well, he couldn't receive the last rites, could he, poor dear? Now then, are you willing to spend a night in the yellow room, Mr. Todd? An unlikely partnership in ghostly research. Ronald Todd and Amelia Watts. He, young, brash, and very broke. She, old, self-serving, and wealthy. One could, in fact, well say that four walls are all they have in common. Uh, Mrs. Watts, could I just get one or two things straight? Of course. I gather it's haunted, the yellow room. <laughs> so they say. Um, uh, who says? People. But nobody's ever stayed there all night? Oh, yes, they have. Oh, uh, then, do you remember the sixth Duke of Wallingford, uh, or was that before your time, Mr. Todd? Duke of... Oh, yes, of course. The, the family bribed some famous psychiatrist to certify that the Duke was perfectly sane, but just the same, he was as mad as a hatter. Quite mad. But he was as sane a man as one could wish to meet once. Uh, but that was before he spent the night in the Yellow Room. You mean he... Uh, the the Duke... haunter and the haunted... Every man's history of ghosts and ghosting. He wrote those books, Mr. Todd. He lived and dreamed the spirit world. He was a, a hunter of ghosts. And he came here? He came. He stayed in this house, in the North Wing, in the Yellow Room. One night he spent six and a half hours there. By morning, he was quite mad. Then there was Captain Bletchford of the Fourth Hussars. He was found in the rose bushes, forty feet below, left through the window. Uh, help yourself to whiskey, Mr. Todd. Uh, there were others who stayed in this room but saw nothing, because I believe they were not alone. It only happens, you see, when a person is entirely alone. What? What is it that 
happened. Oh, my dear Mr. Todd, if I knew that, I would not be offering £1,000 to any man who could provide me with the answer. I see. No one who has spent a night in the yellow room has been the same the next morning. Transformed. Mrs. Watts, um, I must tell you, I, I'm not impressed by psychic research and I have no superstition. <sighs> You are brave. I'm an atheist. So are the others. You mean... The Duke and Captain Bletchford. Uh, well, I, I wasn't always. I was brought up a Christian. Uh, now I'm uncommitted, I'm afraid. You're afraid? <laughs> Just a figure of speech. I, I'm not afraid. For a thousand pounds, I'll spend a night anywhere. I see. One thing, though. If nothing happens, I'll have nothing to tell you, will I? Well, in that case, you will receive £100 just for your trouble. Not an unreasonable fee for eight hours' sleep, Mr. Todd. Uh, no, but... Uh, but, I warn you, if nothing happens, don't invent. I shall know. I am an honourable man. Good. Well, having settled that... I, I wonder if you'd mind telling me just why you're so curious, Mrs. Watts. What do you want to find? I am an old woman. I have lived a long and wonderful life. But soon I shall die. I hope not. If I should be taken tomorrow, God forbid, I would go to my grave, a disappointed woman, never knowing what evil dwells in the yellow room. There's going to be a storm. Yes, yes, the air is stifling. Um... Why haven't you spent a night in the yellow room yourself, Mrs. Watts? Ten years ago, I did. I went into the room and locked the door, had my rosary with me. Unlike yourself, Mr. Todd, I have a very strong faith. And? After 15 minutes, I unlocked the door and let myself out. Why? Mr. Todd, I did not ask you here to question me. And may I remind you that you have come to earn, if you can, a thousand pounds? Uh, yes. Indeed. For that sum, you have a job to do. Quite right. After the job is finished, I shall question you. That is our working arrangement. Uh, would Sunday suit you? Yes, Sunday will suit me fine. After all, you won't be in church. But you must meet Father Doyle. Yes. Oh, one thing I forgot. I shall lock the door to the yellow room once you are inside and settled. It will not be opened again until eight o'clock on Monday morning. No matter what happens. Yes. It's an obsession with Amelia Watts, the yellow room. She dreams of it incessantly. But even in her dreams, she's never been able to peer through the layers of faded wallpaper into the room's terrible secret. But enough of introductions. Let's find out for ourselves. So, this is it. This is it. A bit mouldy, I'm afraid. Anything more I ought to know about it? Well, we're having some problems with the wiring. Oh, how I curse electricity. There are more devastating forces in the world than electricity, Mrs. Watts. Oh, Father Doyle, don't look so disapproving. After all, candles are much more reliable. I'll rely on candles, then. Oh, for a night at least. You'll have to go back to those gracious, far-off times, Mr. Todd. Yes, indeed. I'm still hoping to persuade Mr. Todd to change his mind. It's an unholy experiment you're indulging in. Now, don't <laughs> begin all that over again, Father. He is free. He is over 21. What on earth is there to harm him? Nothing on earth. Now, stop being an old maid, Father. What neither of you seems to appreciate is the existence of evil. Poppycock, of course I know that evil exists. But I have experienced evil. I know how it works. The devil is afoot. <laughs> he is. Don't grin, Mr. Todd. I ask both of you, because I know the history of this house, to seal the door, to lock and bar the yellow room. 
Father, you seem to forget that Mrs. Watson and I have an agreement, a uh, wager, if you like, for this one night. I'd rather you didn't persuade Mrs. Watson to seal the door just yet. Tomorrow, fine. But there's a small question of a thousand pounds in cash first. Then you can do what you like. I only hope you know what you're doing. I also know the room's past. And I don't doubt that whatever you say happened to the Duke and Captain... What's his name? Yet I can't accept that anything but their own imaginations made them lose their minds or jump out of windows. I still say it's an unholy experiment. No, no, Father. Shall we get on with Mrs. Watts? It's ten o'clock and I promised myself a few chapters of Evelyn War before a good night's sleep. Looks like a splendid oak bed. The sheets have been aired, and the pillow is as soft as snow. And you won't have to worry about ending up in the rose bushes. The rose bushes? We had the window barred, Mr. Todd. Well, I haven't come here for the view, have I? Now, Mrs. Watts, Father Doyle, if you don't mind, this is my room for the night. And according to you, my lady, the ghost does not walk unless the watcher is alone. yellow room is high beamed. The shadows are deep. Light comes from only two candles. One is behind a great oak bed above the head of the man who sits reading a novel by Evelyn Waugh. The other candle is on a small table to the right of the door. The yellow room is deathly silent. <laughs> Time for bed. Ronald Todd smiles. In imagination, he spends a thousand pounds on a multitude of wondrous things. And then, without warning, without the slightest movement of the room, the candle above his head goes out. Father? Ah, thank you. You're quite sure you're not hungry? Yes, thank you. Well, there's a kitchen full of food out there. I, I'm really not hungry at all. I enjoy watching a man eat. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, hearty male appetite. Well, a man should have one. Uh, speaking of the other male, our friend upstairs, uh, shouldn't he be told to go home now? What? He's been up there two hours already. He's not completed his bargain yet, Father. But if he's going to be afraid, he'll have been afraid by this time. And if he's all right now, he'll be all right six hours later. Let him out, Mrs. Watts. Father, I am not paying Mr. Todd for being afraid or for not being afraid. I am paying him to sleep in the yellow room and to find out what caused the deaths of four people and drove three others insane. Four deaths? Well, you know perfectly well. I know nothing of the kind. The fellow who threw himself out of the window. Father Doyle, what does it matter how many have died in Chansford? They were all free citizens, all of them old enough to vote. I never knew there were four. Father Doyle, where are you going? I think I'll go out and see how Mr. Todd's making up. You will do nothing of the kind. Come away from that door. May I have your permission to go up and see Mr. Todd? Do I have to ask you to leave, Father? My, my, Mrs. Watts. How authoritarian. Father, you and I are old friends, aren't we? We are. But I don't see that what that has to do... Don't you? Do I have your permission to check on Todd? You do not. Then I think you'd better order me from your house. Very well. Will you kindly leave? I don't really know what you're doing. But I warn you, if something evil happens tonight and there's an inquiry, I shall be bound to say what I know. What do you mean, an inquiry? Knowing full well there are evil forces in the North Wing, you hired a stranger to spend a night. I do whatever I choose in my own Only home. Only if it does not harm other human beings. In this house I have complete freedom. You're not exercising freedom. It's license bribing that young man with money. Oh, for God's sake. There's nothing to harm him. It was all in their imagination, every one of them. All merely imagination, eh? 
Then what can Mr. Todd possibly tell you that's reliable? He can tell me what he experiences. Or imagines he experiences. Father, do atheists sleep well? <sighs> Bride's head revisited by candlelight. <laughs> I wonder if the spooky setting gives one extra edge. What? The candle at the right of the doorway goes out. That's strange. <laughs> oh, must be a draft. I'll we'll soon fix that. <clears throat> the candle behind the bed goes out. Damn, it's pitch black. He begins to feel his way around the wall. Brushes against a switch. Try it. The light, it works. She said the wiring of... Lamp. Shattered. She must have been right about the wiring. I think I'll forget it and go back to bed. Marching music. Sounds like... Oh, just light a bloody match. Yeah, that one's lit. Now the candle behind the bed. But before he reaches the bed, the room is shrouded in darkness as the candle by the door is again extinguished. Oh, ruddy candle just blew out. Oh, I don't need it anyway. Just this one. Oh. Where are the blasted matches? I spilled the whole box. That music. She must have a tape recorder. My old witch. It stopped. <laughs> Always hated much music. <laughs> there, it's lighted. Just one candle in this drafty old room. <laughs> like the little nightlight Mum used to leave in my bedroom when I was a kid. Stop that damn music! I'll light it again. I wish I had that nightlight now. All right. All right, I'll play your game. Somebody else in the room, isn't there? Someone's playing music tapes and blowing the candles out. Fine. Let's leave it dark. The depth of darkness and the drumming march cut through. Oh. Try the candle by the door again. Oh, I need a match. Wet. Oh, there's been water on the floor when I dropped the box. Once more. Nothing. There was a brave old soldier at the Battle of Waterloo. The wind blew up his petticoat and showed his cock a doodle doo. <laughs> Mrs. Watts, you win. Built a trick room, didn't you? A maze with air vents and loudspeakers. Come on, Tom, get your bearings. You're an old boy scout. And in the blackness, like a blind man, he walks cautiously, his arms groping in front of him. The way feels clear. 
he bumps into nothing. Then... Who's that? Sloppy, Todd. Very sloppy. Smart nut boy. Where, where are you? Can't have any slackness here. Come along into line. <laughs> Very good. Nice trick, Mrs. Watts. A tape machine, too. <laughs> Who's it supposed to be? Your husband, the Major? She is not listening. And there's no tape machine. But you're right on one count. I am the Major. Oh, sure. Sure, of course you are. If only I had some light. Some of us refuse to see the light. What? What do you mean, us? Get hold of yourself, Todd. You're talking to an empty room. Us? Those of us in purgatory, Mr. Todd. Huh? Rubbish. Where are my matches? There must be a dry one somewhere. <laughs> Let go. Damn you, Major. Those are my matches. Now give them back. Do you hear me, Major? Give them back. So, you acknowledge me after all? Never. You're a fraud, whoever you are. Not a fraud. A ghost, to be precise. I don't believe in ghosts, or spirits, or the living dead, or the devil, or any of that bunk. What do you believe in? Nothing. What's your game? What do you want? A favor. A little one. I only want your faith. I have no faith. Pity. Even if I had, I wouldn't help you. No pity. What do you want it for? Your faith for my redemption. What would it really take to redeem you? Maybe you deserve the yellow room. You're a stubborn man. Just like all the others. I will not be used. I'm getting out of here. If there is a purgatory, it must be this bloody room. Mrs. Watts, you can keep your filthy money. Open the door. I'm afraid there's no escape. Mrs. Watts! <laughs> Let me out! Might as well say your prayers. Go for it! The window. <laughs> it's only a 40-foot drop. Once you've got through the bars. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you hounding me? Oh, Ronald, Ronald, what would your mother say? <laughs> my, my mother? Ronald, dear, time for bed. Say your prayers for mummy. Mummy? Be a good boy now, Ronald. Say your prayers and mummy will give you back mommy. your toy soldiers. Mummy! Mummy! Sing! Well, a nosy old devil, Father Doyle, uh, saving your reverence, no, of course. No. You always were. You just hide your nosiness under a cross. I woke you sharp at 7.30 because I was concerned for his safety. Of course. Open the door to the yellow room, Mrs. Watts, quickly. Oh, yes, yes, Father, be patient. Good morning, Mr. Todd. Would you like some tea? Give me the keys, woman. <laughs> In all decency, I have to warn him we're entering. There's no time for niceties.
never had my toy soldiers back. Name the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, Lord. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. I was saying it right. Stop it. Leave me alone. Go me. Saying my prayers, I hurt it, I hurt it. Stop it, stop it. Stop it. Dear God in heaven. Ronald Todd was committed to an institution for the incurably insane. Father Gerald Doyle visits him twice a week. The old priest carries a profound sense of guilt he can never be rid of. Mrs. Watts died last year without ever discovering the secret of the Yellow Room. Chansford, her rambling old mansion on Manor Drive, is to be torn down this year to make way for a shopping center. <laughs> that I declare the Chansford Mall officially open. Yeah. Now, we have a special program for you today. And I'm... Hello, hello. hello. Can you hear me, folks? Now, now, please, please, folks, stay calm. Just a temporary power pen, I'm sure. I'm on the lights out again in a minute. Now, keep going, please. Skip. Skip. See if you can rustle up some candles. You have just heard The Room, the Michael McCabe story dramatized for radio by Graham Haley. Graham Haley was also featured tonight in the role of Ronald Todd, with Moya Fennick as Mrs. Watts, Colin Fox as Father Doyle, and Chris Wiggins as The Major. John Stocker was the shopping center MC, and vicarious narration was provided by your series host, the mysterious Luther Kranst. Our recording engineer is John Jessup, with sound effects by Bill Robinson. Our production assistant is Nancy McElveen, and the series story editor is Earl Toppings. Nightfall is produced and directed for CBC Radio by Bill Howell. Graham Haley is called The Room. Welcome. <laughs> Ice, Mr. Todd. Ice? Uh, thank you, Miss Watts. Miss Miss Watts, Mr. Todd. Oh, I'm sorry. There you are. Hmm, thank you. It pleases me to see a man save a whiskey. <laughs> does it, Miss... Sorry, Mrs. Watts. It does. <clears throat> My late husband, the Major, was partial to it. Husband? Yes. Uh, do I look like a spinster? No, no, not at all. You seem determined to make me one. I am a widow. I have been a widow for 22 years. Oh, I'm sorry. Alfred was also fond of a cigarette in the evening. Would you care for one? No, no, thank you. I don't smoke. As you wish. Well, uh, cheers. Yes. Mmm, it's a lovely scotch. Atlas, one of the first ever produced in Scotland and not generally available. Oh, I'm honoured. Oh, so long since I've been able to offer my whiskey. I've had that bottle for more than 20 years. Poor Alfred was the last one to drink from it. <coughs> he died the next day. <clears throat> oh, really? Yes, ironic. What do you mean? The day before he died, he had a violent argument with Father Doyle. That's a long story. Suffice to say, 
the Major renounced his faith. But why do you say it was ironic? Well, he couldn't receive the last rites, could he, poor dear? Now then, are you willing to spend a night in the yellow room, Mr. Todd? An unlikely partnership in ghostly research. Ronald Todd and Amelia Watts. He, young, brash, and very broke. In the dream, you are falling. Lost in the listening distance. As dark locks in. <laughs> Nightfall. Good evening. I would like to reassure those listeners with tendencies towards claustrophobia that tonight I will be especially careful to take care of them. The play, adapted from a Michael McCabe short story by leading player, she, old, self-serving, and wealthy. One could, in fact, well say that four walls are all they have in common. Uh, Mrs. Watts, could I just get one or two things straight? Of course. I gather it's haunted, the yellow room. <laughs> so they say. Um, uh, who says? People. But nobody's ever stayed there all night? Oh, yes, they have. Oh. Uh, then... Do you remember the sixth Duke of Wallingford? Uh, or was that before your time, Mr. Tart? Duke of... Oh, yes, of course. The, the family bribed some famous psychiatrist to certify that the Duke was perfectly sane, but just the same, he was as mad as a hatter. Quite mad. But he was as sane a man as one could wish to 